Okay, this is part two of buying a hat. Now, we were talking about the way a hat should fit. The first thing about fit is that you don't want it to bang into your ear, okay? That's too big. The second thing is you don't want it far from your ear. If the hat is really high away from your ear, up here, there's a big space, it's too tight. You want it to be close to your ear. We're talking a pinky away, less than a pinky, a slight bit more, touching the ear, but not banging into it and interfering. That's too big. If it just barely touches it, you're okay. Uh, it's not obstructing it. The idea is, yeah, um, a lot of times if your hat is like 10 sizes too big, you get a whole hand in there, it just rests on the crown of the hat and there's no friction around here at all, okay? When that happens, like in this case, um, it's hard to tell what's going on with the ear and stuff, but um, you have to maybe jiggle it a little or something. Um, the hat has to be tight enough that it's it's on your temple, there's some friction so that you could tie your shoes and stuff uh, without it falling off. Now, the rule is like this. You got, you have the biggest part of your head is at your brow bone, okay? You have to be able to lock it at the brow bone, like if, if a train's going by or if it's windy, you need to be able to have that place to lock it down. That's the widest part of your head, okay? So when you're tying your shoes and stuff, you should be able to lock it there tight enough. If you feel like, ah, my, the, my brow bone, it's not that tight, really. It could fall. You need to adjust it. You need to tighten it. It's no big deal. Tightening is good. This is the way to buy a hat. Um, you don't buy it on the small side and count on it stretching. Extra room is safe. A little extra room. Um, sweatbands dehydrate. They dry out and they shrink. Your hairstyle changes, it gets a little fluffier, it gets smaller. Hats can shrink for whatever reason. Um, if your hat's on the tight side and any of that stuff happens, you get bigger, your hair gets thicker, your, your sweatband dries out, um, your wool felt hat shrinks a little. Any of those things, you're going to have a hat that's too tight with this red line and you're not going to look good and the hat's not going to look good and you're going to be in trouble. Get extra room. Have it fit nice and loosely or get a little extra room. You can always tighten it up. Most of my hats have some little product in there because it's just very unlikely that a hat's going to fit you absolutely perfectly. Everybody's different. Um, so instead of going small, you go big and you hone it down by adjusting it. Now I've got another video on that whole thing, how to tighten a hat. But essentially you pick up the back, flip up the sweatband and put some foam in there like weather stripping, which is called polyfoam, three quarter inch, you get a strip this big, stick it in, bam, fold it back. You've got some padding under the sweatband. Okay. If you need more, you go around. So the strip gets bigger and bigger until it goes all the way around, and so then you've tightened it up a whole size probably. All right, let's get away from tightening your hats. You've sized your hat, now you're thinking about what hat am I gonna buy? All right, now brim size is important but you want to think first what kind of hat do i want a, a dress hat a fedora do i want a western kind of thing do i want something in between like an outback hat um do i have anything in my mind pictured you know like a big floppy downturn thing a small upturn thing like this anything that i picture that i might want to try tell your salesman you know, I always wanted to try this look, like that, uh, the little black hats from a Bronx tail that they flip up, you know, like Rocky Balboa. I know what you're talking about. Uh, can I try something like that in gray? Or uh, I want to try those hats that are really floppy and turned down, like that rapper Future wears, you know. He's really cool. Oh, well, he's got on uh, a so-and-so inch brim, and uh, he wears his brim down in the front and the back. Okay, so you got the future look, lower the crown, and you wear it oversized over your eyes like this. That's, that's his vibe. Uh, I don't like that either. Hmm, let's try the, uh, the classic Italian, uh, you know, Borsellino look. Okay, high crown, you know, raw edge, whip stitch. Oh, that's very good. Let's try, you know, the same look, two and a half inch brim, two and three eighths with the brim up. That is cool, but you know what? Let's try it dark. This is what you do, you experiment. You, yeah, I like that. How do you think that would look with a little bit less brim? You mean like a two inch or a one and a half inch? Eh, let's try just one step down. 
Yeah, that looks cool. I think that looks really natural on me. I like that look. Um, is it, you know, dressy? What can I, well, you flip it down for dressiness, and then you got your Sinatra thing. You flip it up for your uh, Blues Brothers or your uh, Bronx Tale vibe there. Bam! Okay, you're getting closer. Now, what about quality? You know, you move to the next step. Um, so it's like this. You think about what kind of hat first. Cap, western, outback, pork pie hat, short brim, uh, dress hat with a big brim. You try different brim sizes. You get your brim size down. Bam! Once you hit it, you say, okay, I like this two-inch brim. Then you try colors. Um, dark and light, always try them both. Like a gray is a light color, black is a dark color. They're going to look completely different. Um, try them both. Go through the color span. What else do you have? I have it in green, brown, silver belly, which is like an off-white color. I have it in tan. Um, what else? You know, navy blue. You know what? I'm going to try navy blue. Bam, you stick it on. Mm. What do you think this will match with? Well, navy blue doesn't match with that much, actually, but it'll match with anything you do casual, like your jeans and t-shirts, but if you're talking about suits and overcoats, eh, it's not going to match a whole lot of stuff. Uh, maybe you should go with gray, because gray will match your navy suits, gray will also match your black suits, and go with a whole ton of other things, trench coats and this and that, and charcoal gray, and, and navy, and blazers, and gray, huh, let's try it. You try a little gray, you know. So this is the process. What you do is, it's like uh, step by step. We decided what kind of hat. We want to do a dress hat, a fedora. Um, now we're deciding on brim width. We went through all the brim widths. We decided this is my width. We went dark and light. I decided I want to go, let's just say for argument's sake, I want to go light, okay? Um, what about gray versus taupe? Well, taupe is kind of like a brownish gray, and then our grays have a lot more blue in it, you know? So they're gonna work, uh, well, here's your taupe. Taupe is like very green, but we got two different types of taupe, you know? Um, so think about your colors, how it's gonna match your stuff, yes, but think about how it's gonna match you. How are you gonna color, your colors gonna look on your face? Go to the mirror, get away from your salesman, and give yourself some me time because you're gonna be nervous with him there and you can't think. So ask him, can I have a few minutes so I could just bond with these hats or whatever? He'll say, yeah, and just tell him to step off. And just, uh, you know, look in the mirror, kind of like, uh, you know, vibe on it a little bit. Take a little mental picture, change it, you know. Think about you five years from now, 10 years from now, think about you Whatever, if you're on stage, think about how all these people look at you wearing this hat. What are you gonna, you know, think objectively. Um, think about it lying in your closet with a bunch of your crap. Is this something I'm gonna wanna throw on or is this something I'm not gonna wanna throw on? Is this a useful hat to me? Be objective. Also, look at the picture, the whole picture. Does this look good on me? Is this like a, a good look? Am I handsome in this hat? Um, does it do anything for my skin tone? Uh, if my eyes or anything? Well, actually, yeah, it's bringing out a certain tone in my eyes. I've got bluish green eyes, uh, grayish, you know, so it's people see my eyes more, so that's a good thing. Uh, actually, I think this color with the black band will match my black stuff. I wear black a lot, but I don't want to be the guy all in black. So, okay, that eliminates black. Let's stay away from black, because I, I wear black a lot, but I don't want to be the guy who's all in black with a black hat. What colors can I match to it? We're going to say gray and taupe. Those are two. I'm kind of going through the thought process. These are the things that we kick around when we're trying to buy a hat. So taupe is like an olivey, sagey, greenish brown color. It can be a little bit more towards the, the greenish. It could be a little more towards the brownish. But it's essentially a gray that's like an earthy gray, an earth tone gray. Um, taupe is a rare color. You're not going to see it on lots of hats, but you will see it on some. It's a color that goes with all the earth tones, but it also goes amazing with black. And it goes with gray and trench coats and everything. So taupe goes with everything. Gray goes fantastically with gray, with charcoal, with black, with navy blue, and that whole sort of cool side of family, family of colors. But it doesn't go amazingly with earth tones. 
gray is okay with like, you know, brown and green and tan and stuff, but you know, you see a gray hat with a tan trench coat a lot, like that Humphrey Bogart thing, but essentially if you're doing earth tones, you know, taupe is much better. Taupe crosses over to black, navy, and earth tones. So it's pretty much your most universal color in a sense. I feel like if you have something like a, a beige or a taupe and a gray, you got everything covered. You could wear that with your blues, your blacks, your browns, you know, everything. Um, all right. What else? We talked about brim size. We talked about color. Now, what about quality? Um, you've got crushable hats. You've got regular hats with leather sweatbands and stuff, and a reeded sweatband, a lining, fur felt. <clears throat> and then you've got light felt crushable hats. There's all sorts of things. Light felt hat is going to be inexpensive between like $100 and maybe $125. They are made of wool, but they're made by one place. It's a, I think it's the Ballman Hat Company who makes those. And they're, they're doled out to just like tons and tons of companies. Light Felt has a logo inside, L-I-T-E, Felt. It'll say it. It's rollable and crushable. You can take it, um, you know, like this. Put them in your pocket, and they're like a hundred bucks. They're very hardy. They don't last you like a half a century, like a good fur felt hat can. But um, they're really hardy, and they're good when you don't want to wear your three hundred dollar, whatever fur felt hat in a blizzard or rainstorm. You get your your light felt. It's great for vacations, taking to restaurants, traveling, commuting, taking to work. It's a good everyday workhorse of a hat for like 110 bucks, and we have something like 25 varieties. It's, it's amazing. Light felt is one way to go. Fur felt is going to last much longer because, first of all, it, it doesn't really shrink. I mean, it takes very, very long to shrink, you know, like a decade before you'll notice any damage. Um, Wool felt can shrink if you abuse it. If you get it very wet and you stick it on your radiator, it's going to start messing up a little bit on you. So you got to really abuse these things. The long and the short of it is, better fur felt is going to last you a little longer. Um, wool felt generally won't last as long, but I found this is the bottom line. People who are good to their hats, it doesn't matter what they buy, all their hats look good. People who are bad to their hats, their $80 hats and their $500 hats, they all look bad. So, <coughs> excuse me, it doesn't matter so much. What matters is that you take care of your hats. Um, when they do get rained on, you flip the brim up, you make sure these shapes are where they should be. You don't let it dry like that. Pop it out, get everything right. Straighten the brim out, put it upside down, away from heat or hang it up away from heat. If your house is hot, it's February, and your, your walls are hot, the whole house feels warm as soon as you open the door, uh, guess what? It's heat. So you gotta open the window in the bathroom, in the somewhere, the kitchen, and hang it in a cool room. Um, people wonder, why do my hats feel tight? I ask them, you didn't wear it last year, right? No, I haven't worn it in three, four years. Exactly. When they hang up in your hot house for years and you don't wear them, it dries out. When you do wear them, your body oils and perspirations and whatever, it keeps your hat soft, the, you know, the leather. So wear your hats. If you're not wearing them, keep them in a cool place. Getting back to buying your hats again. Okay, another tangent I went on. There are different things you can buy. There are pork pie hats. If you like a very low crown, let's say you're a short person and you like a super, super low crown, pork pies and diamond, a diamond pork pie is essentially a pork pie with a diamond sort of a crease, a point in the back, a point in the front. It's a pork pie that you can pinch in the front. So the top is flat, like a regular flat, tough, jazzy, breaking bad pork pie, but you can pinch it if you want. Um, most people don't. But a diamond is really cool because it's, it's lower, lower than a pork pie. And they tend to be great quality. Like the, uh, we have a, a Stetson Morgan. We have the diamond by Biltmore. 
We do a whole bunch of uh, hemp ones for the summer. We have, again, the diamond by Bill Moore, the hemp diamonds, you know. Lots, lots of diamonds and pork pies. People like them because they're low. Now, this is a great short hat. Um, you can try a center crease short brim, and you could try a pork pie short brim, and a diamond, see what you like. If you like small and minimal and sporty, you go with the diamonds. It's a great kind of a young looking summer hat that doesn't look like a, you know, a Wall Streeter. Looks like, you know, a young guy hanging out, vacation, you know, I'm a cool dude. It's young and kind of casual. That's how I see it, you know. It's uh, like a fun hat. There's also the coconut straw, which is a type of a pork pie called a telescope. A coconut, we have one called the Telecoco, which has a flat top. It's a brown straw with a red and blue club band. Um, that's the hat you always see on like Revenge of the Nerds. It's like the official like uh, 1950s party hat, you know, like jump in the swimming pool party hat. Um, coconuts are cool, pork pies are cool. There are all sorts of ways for you to go. There are hats made out of cloth, like linen fedoras, cotton fedoras, uh, tweed fedoras, Harris tweed, um, Irish tweed things. There are uh, rain hats. What else can I say? Um, there's a million ways to go. So use my system, get your size, get your brim, think about color, and then when you're in that category, like short brim, light hats, look at center crease fedoras, look at pork pies, look at diamonds. When you're in big brim hats, you know, you can look at Stetson Outbacks and Westerns if you want, anything that's big. But use my system, narrow it down, and you just narrow it down, uh, type of hat, brim size, color, you know, uh, actually size first, type of hat, brim size, color, you know, style, quality. Get that honed down and the size um, and the style will be obvious at the end. It will kind of be the maybe two or three choices left that are in your price range, have the brim size you want, the color you want, um, that's the quality you want, and all the 300 hats on the other side of the store don't matter because you narrowed it down to these three. So that's the way you got to do it. Use my system. I'm sorry this was in two parts, this video. It was just a little bit too long, I think, to uh, support uh, one part. But um, I'm going on vacation, guys, so you might not see Kevin videos for a few days. So watch the old ones, I guess, and you know, practice your hat steaming. And don't burn your forearms, and pay attention if you are steaming. And that's about it. I'm going to play you guys out again. You know, get my Telecaster. Oh, you know what? That loop is still on. Should I turn that loop back on that we made at the beginning of the video? Let's try it. All right. Hold on. Let's turn that loop on, right? All right. I still got that loop. Yeah. Here we go. Thank mm -hmm. you.